Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History. And on this day in history, we're going back to uh, when a particular incident occurred in a football field in Mubi that killed tens of people. You know, this happened on the 1st of June 2014. You know, Nigerians in the northern part of Nigeria, northern part of the country, had gone, you know, to watch a, a match, a football game, and the match was over, you know, People were just crossing the pitch, trying to find their way homes, when someone from, a, a, from among the crowd, you know, detonated a suicide vest, and we saw that there was an explosion. About 40 people died alongside with that suicide bomber. The perpetrators of the attack were not exactly known, but we know that it was at this time that the Boko Haram insurgency, you know, had began to really uh, put a strong foot in Nigeria. And just a few days before then, about two days before then, there was a Boko Haram attack as well, killed about 48, 78 people. Attacks weeks before killed tens and tens of people. So um, it was on this day in history that this particular um, situation occurred, this um, bomb blast in Mubi at Amawa State. But even though people say the death toll was much higher than what was reported, there are about 40 people that we, heard, that we heard in the media. But this was what happened on this day in history. There was, of course, nationwide condemnation of these attacks, saying it was barbaric. But of, of course, we know that um, Boko Haram continues to exert a very, you know, very terrible influence in the country, um, yep. even even with the Islamic State of West Africa, like we know it, and all the abductions of school children. The most recent being the about 200 girls in uh, the Islamic school in Niger State. So that's what happened basically this day in history. Yeah, it, it's also you know it, you know a reminder of you know those dark times in Nigeria where we're dealing with bomb blasts. You know. On Sundays, on Fridays, weekends, weekdays, you know, it was, you know, the the uh, main uh, terror tactic back then of the Boko Haram sect. You know, it has changed, um, you know, either because, you know, the Nigerian government has been able to cut off their um, access to um, bombs or the ability to cr make these uh, suicide bombs, or uh, they just have changed tactics, you know, and decided to take a totally different route. So. Um, those times, of course, I, I pray and I hope that we never go back to those times and we as a country are able to uh, continue to frustrate their efforts and, you know, rid the country of these insurgent groups and these terrorists. Um, we should never, you know, experience the times of, you know, bomb blasts in the north ever again. Even if there's a report of something that happened in River State a couple of days, um, yesterday or the day before. Um, but once again, we, sh we, we as a country should never uh, go back to those times. All right, moving on, let's talk about something now that is um, maybe, a, you know, on a lighter note, a happier story. One of the biggest TV uh, networks in the world um, on this day um, was founded in 1980 by um, Ted Turner and Reese Sconfeld. Both of them founded CNN, the first 24-hour uh, television news uh, uh, channel um, um, on this day in 1980. Um, over time, it has been able to develop to have about 3,000 employees um, and is worth, a, I think last year was worth about $5 billion. Um, it was, like I said, the first 24-hour television station and it debuted on this day. It um, signed on from its headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia with a lead story about the attempted assassination of civil rights leader Vernon Jordan. It went on over time to change the notion that news could only be reported at fixed times throughout the day. Um, the world was at that time used to reading news at certain times, 4 p.m., 9 p.m., whatever time you know that they choose. But CNN changed that narrative and became a channel that read the news continuously 24 hours. Um, initially available in less than 2 million U.S. homes, today CNN is seen in more than 90 million American ho households and more than 370 um, million households and hotel rooms internationally. Um, it was the brainchild of Robert Ted Turner, a colorful, outspoken businessman who was dubbed the Mouth of the South. After his father died by suicide in 1963, he took to, over to business and, of course, uh, expanded it. In the first year of Operation CNN lost money and was ridiculed as the Chicken Noodle Network. It gained significant traction with its live coverage of the Persian Gulf War in 1991, and the network's audience grew along with the increasing popularity of cable television during the 90s and well into the new millennium. It has obviously been a success story. 
you know, and I like seeing these type of things, you know, and the amount of investment that, of course, has gone into CNN to make it what it is today. First mm -hmm. of all, of course, being the first 24-hour news channel, and then second also because of, you know, the, the, the investment, the facilities that were put into it to be able to cover the Persian, you know, Gulf War, like, you know, like I mentioned. And then also being a television that has continued to, you know, be a first here and there. You know, it has also produced some of the most famous TV news anchors in the world. Mm -hmm. um, the Christian Ammon Paws, the uh, mm -hmm. Jonathan Manns, the, oh Lord, Larry King. So, so when I was younger, I could call 10 to 15 CNN anchors off, you know, off the top of my head. Now I can't remember them. Um, what's this guy with glasses now? Anyway, um, it has produced some of the most famous uh, TV news anchors in the Wolf Blitzer. That's the name I was trying to remember. Um, um, Richard Quest. There's some of them who, of course, um, what's his name? Anthony Bourdain, who passed on a couple of years ago, suicide. Um, and Rosemary Church. Oof. Anyway, I'll, I'll stop there. Mm -hmm. I should just say also. Osaro Gyogbon. Um, Amen. <laughs> You're going to so, be yes, pretty was... fast this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was on this day. <laughs> it was on this day that and CNN disloyalty. was founded in 1980. Um, and uh, yes, we celebrate with them, I guess. So That's... I think one of the major, major um, moral lessons, because I'm, I'm, I'm taking moral lessons away from this story with Tetona and his partner, how they started CNN in 1980, is that if you have a dream, no matter how much people criticize you, you never give up. I mean, in all the news articles back then, 1980, all the way till you know, 10 years later, people called CNN Chicken Noodle Network yeah. and said, you know, the, the prediction was that CNN would never last past six months because Ted Turner was really operating on a very tight budget. He had put all his life savings, all his money into CNN. You know, they say what they're going to be, proper, you know, be known by is they're going to be giving live breaking news stories 24 hours and um, CEO of CBS News at that time said how would people watch a patch news network against ours that have been on for about 50 years yeah. with lots of money with our budget and all of that but they never gave up you see many many decades later CNN is one of the most foremost media organizations in the world yeah. they have franchises or what do you call them branches so to speak in different parts of the world, in Nigeria, in the most remote places, you know, so the, the moral lesson there is never give up. If you have a dream, follow through. People will definitely criticize you, yeah. insult you, try to beat you down, but ignore all that and move on. Also a very, um, um, you know, a huge part of uh, Donald Trump's losing the election. Um, that's the power of uh, media. Yes, and happy uh, anniversary to CNN today. We'll be back after the short break, moving into our first major conversation for today. Um, and of course, it's back to the Southeast, a continued conversation, but this time with um, a group called Nkata Ndiyom. We'll be back. <laughs> 